next time on Blood Brothers. He takes on a familiar face. What are you gonna do? Give me a card, yeah, give me a yeah, Just quiet your noise, man. You gave him his own tracksuit. Hello boys and girls and welcome to my preview of Liverpool against Arsenal Carabao Cup and I thought my trip to Anfield was finished for the season. I thought our annual beating was done and dusted but no we go and draw them in the Carabao Cup and this could not be a worse time to go to Anfield with everything that is going on at the moment. It's just an absolute mess. The fallout from the game against Crystal Palace is just dreadful. It's horrible. I hate to see it. There seems to be a standoff with Shaka and the fans because he's not apologizing. Um, Unai Emery in his press conference hasn't really came out and said anything that sheds any light on the incident. He hasn't said whether Shaka's apologized to him or whether he's going to. Um, he hasn't shed any light on you know, whether Shaka's going to be given the captaincy again or whether he's going to have it taken off him. But what we do know is that Granit Shaka's not going to be involved in this game. I don't think he would have been anyway, but it's the perfect one to take him out of the firing line, that's for sure. And it's going to be very interesting for the next Premier League game at the weekend to see what happens with Granit Shaka as to whether he will start the game, be the captain, We'll have to wait and see, but we've got a big one before that. Like I said, it's Liverpool, it's the Carabao Cup, and I'm dreading it. I know we've been playing well outside of the Premier League, and I know that Liverpool are probably going to make a lot of changes, as are Arsenal, but it's still not an easy place to go, is it? You've got to look at Liverpool this season. Um, the way they're flying in the Premier League, Anfield will be packed, it'll be hostile as usual, and I just got no confidence whatsoever. I think we're going to make a lot of changes, but I feel the outcome will still be the same. And um, I don't think there's a lot of people out there that can disagree or tell me any different as an Arsenal fan. Why would you go to Anfield with any form of confidence whatsoever? Look at how we've been playing there the last few years. We get slapped all the time. So if we're going there with a more understrength side, then even though Liverpool might be understrength, you still fear the worst. I really don't know. So anyway, let's go and get into the predicted lineup. It's going to be a very interesting one. Like I said, I feel that Jurgen Klopp will make a lot of changes to Liverpool um, because the Carabao Cup is the last of their priorities. Um, they're looking at the Premier League and the Champions League again and everything else. And even the FA Cup would become before the um, Carabao Cup. So... If you go by their last game against MK Dons, then you would say that they would make some changes. Um, so yeah, we're going to start off in goal and that's Emi Martinez. And um, straightforward decision, Bern Leno is the Premier League goalkeeper and Emi Martinez is the cup goalkeeper. And uh, conceded his first goals in the games against Vittoria last week. Um, but he's looked comfortable, looked um, very confident. So no problem with this one. Um, in defence, on the right-hand side, I'm going to go with Hector Bellerin. Um, be a really good game for him, really big test, and I feel that he's knocking on the door to be playing in the first team. And this is another chance to get 90 minutes under his belt. Pretty straightforward decision, this one. Um, in the left-back position, I'm going to go with Kalazinak. And um, Kieran Tierney played 75, 80 minutes or so um, against Crystal Palace. He had the 90 before that against Vittoria. And I feel now is the right time to just bring him out let him have a little rest and get him ready for the weekend's games um, because he's going to be the first choice left back, to be honest. And these are the games where Kalazinak can get his games. I'm um, going to move to the centre of defence. First of all, going to go with Mustafi and um, a player that's, you know, not in Unai Emery's plans. But um, he comes in during the cup matches and he's been performing pretty well, to be honest. So I've got no problem with this. And that's Mustafi um, alongside him. 
Um, got some interesting selections, but I am going to go with a straightforward one, which is Rob Holding. I feel that he should be given the opportunities in the Premier League, but he's not getting it at the moment. And these are the perfect games for him to get minutes and to um, show Unai Emery that he should be starting. So pretty straightforward, that one. And looking at it, it's quite a strong back line, to be honest with you. And um, I'm quite happy with that. Going to move into the midfield area. First of all, Lucas Torreira. And uh, of course, he's not really getting any minutes in the Premier League. And these are the competitions where he's getting his game time. So I'd like to see him there and in his preferred role in that kind of number six defensive midfielder. And I can't say no more than that. Stop playing at number 10. I've gone over and over and over about it. I think everyone has, you know, voiced their opinions on that. Stop playing in there. Put him in his preferred position. Um, alongside him, I'm going to go with Joe Willock. And um, taken out of the squad completely for the Crystal Palace game. I feel he's been made a bit of a scapegoat um, with a couple of performances of late. Um, but that shouldn't knock his confidence. He's had a good start to the season. He's doing well. And these are the competitions where he should be getting more minutes in and should be, you know, trying to stake his claim within the first team. So um, I'm going to go with Joe Willock. Let Gwendozi have a rest. Um, I wouldn't put Sabias there. And obviously Granit Xhaka's not travelling. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go with Joe Willock next to um, Torreira. Um, in the attacking three, first of all, on the right-hand side, I'm going to go with Nicolas Pepe. And um, I want him to keep playing. I want him to go out and express himself. I feel that Liverpool's style of play may well be more suited to Nicolas Pepe. You've got to remember when we went to Anfield earlier on in the season, he had a lot of chances and a lot of freedom. Um, so I would actually stick him there. If you think of the Vittoria game, only played around about 10 minutes. So um, it's not like he's played a couple of games in four days or so. So um, yeah, I'd start him in this game, to be honest. Um, especially with the fact that Reese Nelson's still out injured as well. Um, on the left of the three, um, I'm going to go with the young lad Saka. And um, I think it was right to take him out the firing line against Crystal Palace. Um, let him have a bit of a breather, shall we say, but um, big game for him and it'd be a good test and, you know, whoever plays for Liverpool will be a difficult evening. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how he does. In the middle of that three, I'm going for Mesut Ozil. We have heard today that he is back in the squad and I feel Unai Emery may have no choice right now. You hear the fans discontent singing Ozil's name. And I feel with the incident with Shaka and everything else, maybe Unai realises he might need to get the fans on his side a little bit more. Um, so putting Meza Ozil back in the squad. Um, and I'm also hearing that he may well captain the side. That just shows how laughable it is. The man that's been frozen out for weeks can come back and be given the captain's armband. That's nothing against Meza Ozil. It's just the hierarchy and it's just shambolic, to be honest. Um, but yeah, listen, Mesut Ozil, no problems whatsoever. Um, I suppose there will be a doubt over his fitness because he hasn't played a lot of football at all. Um, but there's certainly no doubt over his ability and what he can do on his day. Um, up front, as the main striker, I'm going to go with a young lad, Martinelli. And I feel that he deserves the opportunity. He's been playing really well. Three games, five goals. Um, I was tempted to play Lacazette, but he did get the full game against Crystal Palace. Aubameyang, don't want to risk him. Um, so I would go with Martinelli. I'd give him another opportunity and I would see what he can do to Liverpool's defence. Because uh, it's no doubt going to be different. I don't know whether the likes of Virgil van Dijk is going to be playing. And I feel that he could get some joy. So um, very, very interesting. And that's what I will go with. So there we go. That is it. That is my preview. That is my predicted lineup. Um, what do you think? Let me know in the comments section. Do you agree with that? Do you disagree? Would you replace anyone? Is there anyone else you would like to see? I do feel that it's going to be a lot of changes um, to the squad. I feel that Liverpool will make changes as well. I think that that's a strong lineup. I think our defence looks quite strong with the likes of Holding, Bellerin. Uh, Martinez has not let us down so far. Uh, the midfield looks strong. Torreira's in there. Joe Willock's had a decent season. Meza Ozil should be coming back. And then, of course, you've got the exciting prospects of Saka um, and Martinelli and Nicolas Pepe, of course, and whether he can, you know, really start to try and ignite his season, shall we say. So 
there we go that is it um if you're new around here hit the subscribe button make sure you smash the like in this video um, and I'll be back for a player ratings after the game and we will see whether we advance to the next round or not. But I'm not holding my breath. I'll see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.